This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. The day the day approved abortion, it was time to abort the Supreme Court. Oh, no, they just, and you know, the Supreme Court does not make law. Listen to me, they do not make law, they give an opinion. And there's a lot of things being forced today in America as law that Congress has yet to pass one law on. I read where one minister that teaches all the time on the Constitution stuff, he was, he was touring the Supreme Court, and the tour guy said, and this is where laws are made. He said, excuse me, watch that big dome building over there. What do they do? Boy, she didn't like that question. Because this is where we, no, you don't make law there. They don't have the power to enforce law. They give a legal opinion. Oh, that's a whole different subject. What template do we go to? I call this the Cornelius template. We, we need to position ourselves for sudden, sustained, powerful movements of God. Okay? They do not happen by happenstance. Hear me. They are not random. They only spring forth on fertile ground. Cornelius was a Roman soldier. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion, and he was in a rock band called the Italian band. Now, <laughs> he was in an all-Roman or all-Italian Roman band, which was 555 infantrymen and 66 cavalrymen, and he commanded I think it's like 50 or so was what a centurion is over. So he was a man of stature, of a larger one, and they were all true, true Romans. They weren't mercenaries. He was a citizen of Rome, born, raised Roman citizen. Okay? A devout man. Underline this and you're about devout. You want to be ready for the next move of God and for it to be sustained in your life. Devout has to be a part of the nomenclature of who you are. I think every generation is touched by the fire of God. But what we have never been taught is once the fire has come, it is our responsibility to keep it burning by our fidelity to the covenant. He was a devout man. One that feared God. Let me tell you something. Every time I get in the pulpit, I'm, I'm nervous. And you say, Mike, you should be able to do this stuff. And you say, yes, you can throw a Bible at me in the middle of the night. I will sit up in the bed, grab the Bible in midair, and wherever it opens up, I can preach out of it. That's not the problem. This is a sacred desk. When I get behind this desk, I am no longer speaking for Mike Lake. I am speaking for Almighty God. And one day I will have to stand before him and give an account of what I have spoken. And if I can't speak it out of the fear of God, I better go home. 
That's level one of the understanding of this. The second understanding to tie into what Josh was talking about, it's a term called a God fear. A God fear was a Gentile. Oh, he's a Roman soldier. He's a centurion. He's commanding a hundred men or whatever. But he has denied the gods of Rome. He turned his back on paganism. He's now serving the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's keeping kosher. He's keeping the feasts. He's keeping the Sabbath. When he's able to get up to Jerusalem, he's in the Gentile court worshiping. That is what a God fear is. A God fear does it all except he never was circumcised to become physically a Jew because it would have probably cost him and his family their status and everything else within Rome. And so he was a God fear. He did everything up to the point of becoming physically Jewish, and the synagogues were full of them. That's why the Apostle Paul would go into a synagogue and he would first preach to the Jews. And then he would preach to the Gentiles about a greater circumcision, the circumcision of the heart that was only available through Messiah. Sounds like a good deal. Circumcision sounds rough when you're a grown man, okay? Circumcision of the heart is better. But let me tell you something. We have a lot of believers today that claim to be believers, but their heart has never been circumcised. Because once it's circumcised, everything that flows out of your heart is in line with covenant. Because everything you reproduce in your life comes from your heart. So he feared God with all his house, so his faith, his faith affected all the Roman citizens living in his home. His wife rejected the paganism rejected the mystery religions and was serving the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he gave much psalms to the people. And he prayed to God always. That's the template that you are devout in your walk with God. We have got to make our spirituality first place in our lives. We are people of the word we are people that have faith actions because faith, faith without works is dead. If you believe the word, you do acts of righteousness. Sometimes it can be getting in a semi and taking water to people through, un, 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 you know, we, we heard during lunch all the things that, that the what, Cajun army, that's faith. I serve Jesus. Jesus wants to help. I got a truck. Let's go, Jesus. And the Lord was behind him every step. And he'll tell you, it wasn't me. I got out of the way and it was Jesus. That's the way it's supposed to be. We, we have to be people that are devout in our faith. The word of God is true. I'm wrong. Anytime there's a disagreement between me and the word, I lose. Quick to repent, quick to correct. That I, the, the apostle James says, we need to approach the word with humility so that it can be engrafted in us. As it's engrafted in us, it changes us. And we have, to, we have to have devotion and motion in the kingdom once again. That we've got to fear God once again. You know, I love, I love Mike and Jeannie to death. But if I'm preaching the word and they get offended at me and, and ask me never to come back, I won't give it a second thought. Because I won't change my message to make anybody happy. That's the one of the things that I've learned. <laughs> Unlike the modern mega church that looks at all of these statistics and, and demographics, well, the demographics can be wrong because they're all sinners. Amen. Come on now. You speak the truth because you're representing God. God judged the Levites in Malachi, which actually opened up for the whole concept of rabbis. Malachi, was ju or, or Malachi judged the Levites because they quit teaching the people what they needed to hear and started teaching them what they wanted to hear. And they violated the covenant that Levi had with God. And we can say, oh yeah, these Jews this, those, these Jews that. The church is just as guilty, if not more, in our era than they were during the book of Malachi. 
Because if we don't teach the people what they want, they'll leave and they'll take their pocketbooks with them. Don't build something that you can't keep going if you're faithful to God because it was never God's to begin with. I believe every ministry should try its best to run debt free. I'm finally to the place where we are, glory to God. It took a lot of planning, a lot of prayer, and, and a lot of different things, and, and I'm going to try my best. I am never going to go outside of what I can write a check for because I'm never going to, I, I never want that pressure of, boy, you know, God's given me this to preach, and, and I, I know I got a mortgage payment coming up. And boy, if I preach that, it may, I may have to go back into my banker. I, I made everybody mad. And, and they all left, and I got, I got $10. Can you imagine the pressure of that? And, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking down. I'm, I'm, I'm empathizing with them for the pressure. Some ministries, because of the staff and salaries and everything else, just to keep the doors open, they have to bring in a million dollars a month. And if you don't, lights go off. Families don't get fed. People don't have health insurance. All the, there's a lot of pressure with that. But man, if you can get it to where you operate in God's kingdom and, and don't build what you can't pay for. And that way there's not that pressure there because we got to stay faithful to what God tells us to do. And we have to walk in this fear of God. God notices your giving and this is alms. This is not the tithe. This was giving to the poor, those in need above the tithe. And later on, when the angel showed up, he says, heaven took notice of your alms. Heaven took notice of what you gave above the tithe because you just saw somebody in need and you had money in your pocket and you gave it to them and you forgot about your need. That gets God's attention. How many know we're called to be givers? And it's not because it's a lottery, we're not involved in Amway. Just put it in you. Come on. And some of them have taught it that way. I believe in the hundredfold return, but it doesn't have to be Ferraris. And to be, guy, I'm older, okay? We don't need a Porsche. We will kill ourselves. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord, thou shalt get an SUV that is builteth like a tankist. Because we know it's the way you drive us, okay? We need to begin learning in, in that devoutness to God. Watchman E talked about, it's, it's in his book called The Releasing of the Spirit. Watchman E had some really neat ideas. Oh, that's Oriental. Let me tell you something. The Semitic Hebraic mindset is an Eastern mindset, not a Western mindset. Many times the Oriental mindset of people like that from China that discovered Jesus is closer to the mindset of Paul than we are. When Watchman Nee talked about authority, he goes all the way, he goes all the way back to the fall of man and, and, and hit something in the garden I never saw before. He said, when man was given the knowledge of good and evil, what it gave is man the ability to tell God, you're not going to choose what's good and evil. I will. kind of screams off the headlines today, don't you think? You see, only God can declare what's right and what's wrong. And he, he writes, he said, listen, when we, when we get saved, the problem is it's, it's like we're, we're a mini tabernacle, okay? Outer court, inner court, you know, the holy place. And then our spirit man is the holy of holies where, where, where the throne of God is. Our problem is that curtain has never been ripped open. <laughs> There's this big crusty area that, that's blocking your spirit from moving from your soul. We're like, we have like crusty barnacles matey over all of us because of the deep seas that we've been going into and, and how rough life was. And part of the breaking of learning to humble ourselves before God and breaking is God begins to break that shell so that we're no longer living by our soul, but we're living by our spirit. Because it's your spirit man that's connected to the third heaven where the throne of God is. And you begin sensitive to what God is saying. You become sensitive. If, if we had that kind of discernment, there'd be no more charlatans in the church. I don't care what you say. I don't care about the Rolex on your, on your arm. Or sometimes they'll get an old beat up 
you know, Timex or, you know, just go, go with the other end. And you say all the right things. And, and I, I have known people in the Pentecostal movement that everybody thought was saved and their deacons in the church and everything else. And they got the Holy Ghost and they just know how to shimmer and shake and use the language. No discernment. And they walk up and they're, I'm doing this for the Lord and I'm doing that for the Lord. You want to say, you can't do anything for the Lord because you're not even part of his kingdom. You've just, you've just learned the lingo and you've learned the mannerisms and you've learned the politics of what we call church. If we had discernment by the Spirit, I, guys, I, I've been in airports and I'm thinking, I sense a believer here and it feels familiar. I did that one time up in, I was, I was over in, in New York, I can't remember if it was LaGuardia. So I, I just hunted down the feeling. There was Dr. Roger Sapp, one of my graduates, and we had a great conversation. I didn't know he was going to be in there. In the, in the, in I, I just sensed in my spirit. How many times has Henry Gruber, that God, you know, he gets into a situation and God says, don't go there. Okay, I won't. That if he would have, he, he could have had presumptuous faith and got killed. When was the last time you had enough faith in God? You looked at a guy with a gun in your face and said, you can't kill me, I'm already dead. <laughs> <laughs> we need to capture the attention and the imagination of this generation. What well, gives me hope, and I'm going to end with this because I've got 30 seconds left. But I still, somebody stole my 20 minutes. Um, what made my day what made my day Xander was when you told me about your son for 40 years I've argued with aspirants of the ministry because they didn't want to read they didn't want to study they argued with me about the word well that won't preach stuff you're trying to do won't preach either as far as heaven is concerned how many have read the, uh, the Shiner Directive? Okay. Eight-year-old son has read both my books, highlighted and sticky-noted out the kazoo, and then talks to his mentor and says, Dr. Lake said this on page 25. What do you think about this? And he also said this on page 125. And the guy said, you know what? I need to read that book and catch up with him. That gave me hope. Because I don't know what this is going to look like in 10 years. Come on. Now, Josh Tolley will be in his prime. My prime has been way back in my, my rearview mirror, you know. I don't know if I'll be able to preach in 10 years. You don't know. It's going to... I, I, what I'm sensing in my spirit, and, and any of us that are over 50, if you're younger than 40, you're getting ready to be handed a torch in the kingdom. And God's getting ready to give you a fire that he's going to require you to keep the fire burning and then to give it to the next generation and say, make it blaze even more. Amen. So walking in the supernatural has got to be as common to us as breathing for the next generation to get it. Because everything with the AI and this connectivity and everything else is a cheap imitation of what we're going to have. In the Soviet Union, they were able to flip many ministers to become communists. But there's one group they couldn't do it, Pentecostals. Because when they would begin torturing them or do the brainwashing, the dudes would start speaking in tongues and they knew it was over. <laughs> you can't flip this one. Because although they could try to affect the mind, they couldn't affect the spirit. And they would just send them out into the work camps. You know how in Soviet Union, you know how you found out where church was? And for them, they, they, it wasn't you know, Sabbath or Sunday. It's we're going to meet one day this week. And it's going to be a different time every week and a different location every week. And here's how you find out to make sure you're not KGB. You pray, God shows you, you show up, you're a believer. <laughs> Seeing that happen in China, same thing. 
Howard Carter, the one that taught Lester Summerall the gifts of the Holy Spirit, he could hold his own against the Dalai Lama, an adept in black arts. He's running around talking, pace, 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 you know. He is an adept in the mystery religions. And him and Howard Carter would go up and they would actually camp out where the Dalai Lama lives and everything and debate them and hold their own and begin reading their mail and everything else. And they would go a certain way each day. And Howard Carter said, today we're not going that way. There's bandits there, the Lord showed me. So we're going to go this way. We're going to be safe. He knew how to move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. When he met Lester Sumrall in America, Lester Sumrall was about 18, 19 years old. Brother Carter, I'd like to go with you on a mission field. Great. I'm going to be in Australia. See you there. It took him six months to get his passport, raise the funds, and get there. The whole time he's on the ship, I don't know where he is. I don't know where to telegraph him. I don't know anything. How in the world am I? Australia is a big place. So he, he's walking down the, the off-ramp on the boat or whatever they call it, okay? I'm not a, a, I was Army. I don't know about this Navy stuff. He, he was walking down the ramp, and a guy greets him, big smile on his face. Brother Lester, I'm here to fetch you. Howard Carter sent me down here to fetch you. He told me you were going to be on this boat and you'd get off right now. And I knew exactly what you were wearing because he told me, come on, let's go. <laughs> That's the gifts of what's available. Yeah, it's not for the super-powered preacher that tries to act like a Gnostic and he gets all, whoa. <laughs> Have you ever seen him? Oh, God, a prophetic word. <laughs> Spurgeon moved in words of, of prophetic words and words of knowledge in the middle of his preaching and never missed a beat, and they thought it was in his notes. And here's another one for all you Pentecostals. I've seen people move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit that never spoke in tongues. Because where we have made it an initial sign, it was initial on the day of Pentecost. It was initial at Cornelius' home because it had to be to get their attention because they thought the Gentiles were as filthy as pigs and were unredeemable until they became physically Jews. And God got Peter's attention and proved it by a many day of Pentecost at Cornelius' home. And so he goes back and says, dude, it was like it was with us. I can't argue with God. But the apostle Paul asked, if, asked directly, does everybody speak in tongues? He wouldn't have asked that if everybody did. And too many in the Pentecostal movement, see, I get everybody, you get a toe out. That's turning yellow now. Okay, I'm gonna finish with this. I've got to. We have sought tongues. We have sought an experience and not a person. And I have seen many that spoke in tongues that never did a thing for God the rest of their life. They never moved in a gift. They never did anything, but they could rondai shandai with the best of them. But I have seen people that when they prayed, they may, they may stammer and they may cry and a lot of things. And I think that's their form of praying in the spirit. But they, they would move heaven. They would have people healed. They would move in the wisdom of God and they would move in the supernatural. And the Pentecostals wouldn't know how to grit it because you couldn't rondai shandai. Quit putting God in a box. Yeah. I've said all that to say this. Be devout. Press into God until your wife no longer needs a nightlight because you be glowing at night. And learn the voice of God and learn how to move in God. And it should be so natural that your children to begin moving in it because it's a common place in their household. It becomes natural to them to walk in the supernatural. Because that generation, if the Lord tarries, is going to need it. Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus that for the men that you would release spiritual testosterone that we would become men of God, that we would dare believe the word, that we would dare be men of prayer, and that we would dare to be obedient to the God of the universe. And Father, I pray for every woman that her heart 
as a mother and as a woman would come into balance and that she would dare to seek the heart of God and that her relationship with God would so deepen that when God's heart beats, her heart beats. And Father, let the older men teach the younger men. Let the older women teach the younger women how to love and how to obey covenant and how to walk with God and how to walk in the supernatural. And Father, I ask that if we're, if we're wrong in an area, that you would correct us, that you would wake us up with dreams, that you would take away our peace until the correction is established and we're back on the path that we need to be on because you desire to use us more than we desire to be used. Give us a fresh anointing for obedience, a fresh anointing to be empowered to carry the fire of God in a world that's spiraling out of control in darkness, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys. The fallen immortals that rule the kingdom of darkness have enabled the esoteric societies that control this world to nearly fulfill Nimrod's dark directive. They have taken society down the Luciferian rabbit hole into a technological matrix of darkness. But the Almighty will not allow the enemy to bring his demonic forces for the final showdown without raising up one of his own. God is waking up people around the world who are shaking off their techno-sorcery-induced spiritual slumber and are answering heaven's call. There is an end-time empowerment coming for God's remnant, and it is beginning to unfold in our day. It is time to awaken, be empowered, and become the Sheerith in this generation. The Sheerith Imperative is a must-have tactical manual for God's remnant in the last days. Get your copy at kingdomintelligencebriefing.com that's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. Hell may have its directive, but heaven has its imperative. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.